and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I'm here with the two-part series. This is part two about why you consider becoming an aircraft dispatcher. If you don't know what that is, an aircraft dispatcher, I have another video which I recommend you watch first. But let's talk about some of the benefits of becoming an aircraft dispatcher. You have an opportunity for very interesting and challenging work. No two shifts are going to be exactly the same. Aircraft dispatchers deal with many flights on a shift and there's always something going on. You get the benefit of feeling like your work has meaning and purpose because as a dispatcher, you are responsible with the captain of each flight to ensure safety and efficiency within the operation. Also, there is excellent salary earning potential in the aircraft dispatch field. Uh, the dispatchers who actually start at a regional airline, you're looking at thirty dollars to $40,000 a year salary, potential of overtime. However, once you get beyond the smaller company, if you are a entry-level dispatcher, Southwest, for example, who just got a new contract recently, they start at 98000 and they are topping out well over 170000 a year for their more senior dispatchers. So there's a lot of earning potential to be had. But with that, if you're into aviation and you're worried about affording aviation training, aircraft dispatch has a very low entry cost compared to, say, for example, becoming a pilot. You don't have to pay for a lot of flight training because it's classroom training and most of the schools offer a five to six week training program for a relatively low entry cost. Also, the work environment that dispatchers have is often extremely excellent, very uh, high tech facility. As an example, I'll just put up a quick picture at Southwest Airlines headquarters where I've had the opportunity to visit a few times. Since I know a dispatcher or two that work there. That facility and American Airlines facility also over in the Dallas area, they're both built to withstand direct hits from tornadoes. They have really awesome technology and it's just a really cool work environment with a lot of technology at your fingertips to do your job. And this is not the case at every company, but a lot of them, it's a pretty cool working environment. Let's talk about some not as necessarily work-related benefits. What a lot of people do not know is how you have the opportunity to travel, of course, with your airline benefits, but you're home every night, frequently. Uh, I mean, you can travel, but frequently the dispatcher is at headquarters of the airline, so you're getting to work an aviation job well, you get home every night. So that might be better for your schedule. It might be better for your quality of life than being a flight crew member or a flight attendant. Also, a really little known fact is that aircraft dispatchers have the benefit of flying in the aircraft's flight deck in the jump seat, sitting right behind the pilots. Dispatchers are allowed to do that. In fact, it's one of the requirements of training every year for a dispatcher to get to go and observe flights from the jump seat. I've got a picture of a beach because I know a dispatcher who likes to take his jump seat observation and happens to go to beaches and then take his family along and the company pays for him to go and his family gets to go along too. So that's super cool. Also, as a dispatcher, you don't actually need an FAA medical. I have another string of videos about getting your medical, but if you've been trying and it's, it's not working, it's not coming fast enough for you and you want to do a backup career that does not need a medical or you're a flight crew member and you're concerned about maybe losing your medical in the future, consider getting an aircraft dispatcher certificate, which doesn't require a medical. There's also no mandatory retirement age. I have heard of a dispatcher who is in his 80s working at, at Delta Airlines as one of their flight superintendents. So. You know, if you want to work a long time and you don't want to worry about your FAA medical stuff, think about becoming a dispatcher. Lastly, I'll give you guys a few tips for picking a training program. Like I mentioned, it's, it's fairly low entry cost tuition-wise, um, but some things that you might want to ask 
when you're looking at a training program is what is your pass rate like? Ask them how many people are passing the FAA test that is administered at the end. Look for a program where people can pass that test on the first try. You want to ask about what's included. Some programs include the fee that the FAA test person is going to charge. Others do not. I just would want to know in, up in advance what is included. Also, you want to ask, what is my option if I don't pass the test? I mean, how long do I have to take to retest? Do you guys give me another tuition? Do you make me pay the whole course fee again? You don't want to fail the FAA test, but it can happen. And I would definitely be asking that as you're looking at programs when you're considering. Also, I would ask for alumni names and say, hey, tell me about your experience with this program. How was it? Um, get that information and find out what they think about the program. Ask what course materials are used. I highly recommend trying to get a program that uses Jefferson as a chart provider. That's what almost all the airlines in the United States are using. And so being familiar with Jefferson charts in your dispatch training is going to get you familiar when you go for job interviews and when you start working at one of these airlines. So highly recommend that. Also, I recommend asking, do they teach you aircraft performance? Do they teach you the airport analysis it's maybe called? Do they teach you weight and balance? And ask maybe to see the course materials. I would for sure be wanting to be upfront with the school about this that you're considering. You are considering investing. It is a lower entry cost than learning to fly, but it's still your money. And so I highly recommend finding a good training program. And if you are looking for one and you wanna combine it with either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, think about where I work. I'm wearing my shirt from Letourneau University today. They're not paying me to make this video or anything, but I would recommend you look at our school. That would be a great place and I would love to have you come and be part of our dispatch class. Ours is integrated in an associate's or a bachelor's degree program, which is excellent because some of the major airlines do look more favorably on candidates who have a degree, but it is not required for you to get hired. However, again, many airlines do like it if you have an actual associate's or a bachelor's degree. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos on aircraft dispatch and a lot of other aviation topics and have a fantastic day.